Hey guys, welcome back to the Small Town Cook Kitchen. I'm your host, Kevin Dobson, and today I'm showing you how to make the 10 minute cheesecake. Yeah, that's right. This thing has got me out of so many different issues. There's no bake, no gelatine, no nothing. Just chuck it in the freezer for an hour and she's ready to be sliced. Here we go. All right guys, to get this thing cracking straight away, we need to chuck some butter in a pan and just get that melting. So I'm doing two tablespoons here to about 150 grams of biscuits. You can use any biscuits you want, but today I'm using hobnob biscuits, which are a great British biscuit. Perfect, with a cup of tea. But you can use digestives, Oreos, whatever cheesecake base you love. We all have a favorite. We all have a favorite cheesecake. This one here, white chocolate, lemon, and raspberry. These three flavors just they all match up perfectly together. All right, like I said, 150 grams, so about half a packet of hobnobs. I'm just gonna stick those into a glad bag, or I like to call it the smashing bag, as a lot of marinades and everything, get, so much things get done in these wee plastic bags. So I'm not even gonna measure that out, just half a bag there or so. Grab whatever you've got handy that's hard. Just give them a smash. These things break up pretty easy. Don't worry if you've got a few lumps and crunchy bits in there, that'll be fine. Don't want to burn that butter, but get it melted, you know? Now this recipe, I did, I did for a girl back in the day. She said it was her birthday and she wanted a cheesecake. And I completely forgot. So it rolled around Sunday, I had no gelatine, nor did I have time to bake it. I only had about two hours up my sleeve. And I just, I thought I'll whip down to the shop and get some white chocolate and I'll give this a go. So I was thinking about it one week and I thought it will work. So here we are, I guess. I'm sharing it with you. All right, melted butter in the pan. Don't wait around for it all to melt. It will soften. You know, we haven't got time for this. Yeah. So just mix that around. Use a spoon if you want, use your hand. Get it, all those crumbs nice and wet. Beautiful, beautiful. Now for our spring pan, 18 inch, you can use 20, you can use 15, you can use whatever. The only difference is gonna be the depth of cake. So if you like this much biscuit and this much cake, or that much cake and that much biscuit, it, it, it's all up to you, mate. You, you, you do you, okay? My nice wee trick for this is I just snap off the bottom, baking paper over the top of that, and then I just slip this ring right back on and then clip that mother up. And then that just tightens on to that beautifully. Then I take a knife, cut that, straight across, rip her off. Now that, I know it doesn't look very pretty, but that is gonna save your cake. All right, now we've got those wet crumbs. Let's just go straight in there, okay? This, just lay it out. Press it down a little bit. Doesn't need to be really firm. It's gonna firm up because the butter's in there and that's what's gonna set this thing, you know? So you're, gonna, you're not gonna be able to push it. It's all gonna So just make sure it's nice and flat, okay? Get that in there nice and lovely and into the freezer with that one, guys. All right, guys, get cleaned up after that. Now we're gonna start on the cream cheese filling. So I need some white chocolate melting. So sort up a saucepan like this, small one. A pot, whatever, whatever small bowl you can kind of put over the top to make sure it doesn't uh, doesn't touch the bottom of the pot. Bit of hot water in the bottom there. Put that onto a medium to low heat. You just want to melt this chocolate. Again, you can do this in the microwave if you want. I just do it on the stove top because I don't have a microwave. Um, white chocolate. 150 grams of this. This is 180. Try look for something with high butter content. Around 30% for white chocolate would be decent. So I'm just gonna take the top off there. And then rest of this. Again, we can use our tool. Smash that up a little bit. A bang in there. That's about 150 there or take, you know. I left off a little bit of it. For me to eat. Now. Same pan that we just melted the butter in, honey. 
I'm gonna put about three tablespoons in there. Okay, and stick that onto a low heat, just to warm it up. Now, the reason I'm heating this honey up is I have my cream cheese. Now, I really want the cream cheese to be warm. So if you can kind of leave it out on the bench for an hour, perfect. If you can't, just jam it in your microwave. I don't have one, so I've gotten this out earlier. But I really hate lumps in my, in my, in my cheesecake. And when you whip this up, sometimes it's really hard, even if you're in a machine, and we're just gonna do this all by hand, to really get those lumps incorporated into the cream mix. So, if I've got the hot honey and the warm kind of cream cheese, I'm gonna make a really quick, warm kind of paste, and it's gonna emulsify really well, and it's gonna become warm. And then I can put my lightly folded yogurt and uh, cream through that really easily, and there's no lumps, you know? So just getting that heated up. Now, as I said before, yogurt. I like to strain mine beforehand, just to get it nice and thick, and it gives it a different, so you can kind of take off that way. I just set up a little sieve like this, with a little cheap chucks cloth, and kind of pour in my yogurt there. Now, I've got one cup, about 250 grams, of strained yogurt. You can kind of do this exact same thing and just grab the bag if you haven't got the time and just squeeze it into the sink, squeeze all that moisture out. But I had the time again, so I just put a little bit of a weight on it and... Okay, once that honey becomes runny, you can see it. It's just, it's almost like liquid. Pour that over your cream cheese. And I think this chocolate is ready to come off. If half of it starts melting, just mix it. Mix it all together and you don't need it. Because if we can keep all of these products reasonably cold, it's gonna set a lot quicker. So just over some hot water, that's gonna melt the time I'm finished doing all these things. All right, so whisking now this cream cheese with the warm honey. And you wanna make sure you get this really smooth. So those lumps that you see there, just keep whisking until you see no lumps. I think we're nearly good. So about 30, 30, 40 seconds, guys. It shouldn't take any longer than that. Get a nice balloon whisk like you see me using here with the fine wires. It's super, for something like this as well, nice and light. It's not gonna put too much pressure on the whisk. All right, now our yogurt. About a cup, 250 grams, strained in there, okay? Perfect. Take this off. Remember, clean as you go, you can stop. You don't have to work as fast as I do. But I've got a point to prove that this is made in 10 minutes. Okay, now, cream. 150 mils, lightly whipped to a soft peak. What do I mean when I say a soft peak? I mean it's kind of gonna jump up and then it's just gonna flop over. And it's not gonna kind of go straight into the cream, it will just lay on top and it's slowly going. When you hit firm peaks, it's when it stays straight up, okay? So we just want soft peaks, just a nice soft flop over, okay? 150 mils of that is about there. Okay. Weigh it out, guys, if you don't know, okay? Don't be like me, all cowboy-like. I just know that that's pretty much there about, you know? Now we want to whisk that yogurt back through. Again, getting rid of all those lumps. We're pretty lump free though, guys. We are looking good. All right, chocolate. Probably about 10 seconds away. Just those last few bits. Now. Using the same whisk, because I hate dishes, we're gonna whisk this cream. When people whisk cream, people just go back and forth. Make sure you lift the liquid and bring it back into itself. And you, there in a turn, you're just pumping this air straight into the cream, and you become it's such a lighter cream that you, you create, you know? And I could be using the machine, fair enough. If you wanna use a machine, go for it. I just like using less, equipment as it only makes less dishes, you know? It's gonna take you two minutes to whip this cream. Not even. Lifting that cream up and expelling that air straight back into it. Making a lovely whipped cream. About this stage now, 
if you want and you do not have to, if you think that the honey that you've put in there is sweet enough and you don't want to put any more sugar in there, by my means, you don't have to put any more in. Okay, that's your choice. But I like to sweeten it up a little bit. I've got a bit of a sweet tooth, that's for sure. So I just like to add some of this icing sugar, maybe, oh, I'm gonna say about two teaspoons, two heaped teaspoons in here, and a little bit of vanilla. Vanilla extract, not essence, or vanilla bean if you're rich enough, but none of us are really. So that's good enough in there. And then just whisk that through. I do that right at the end. I don't like doing it at the start for some reason. I've just always done it right at the end there. So that cream is just coming up now. You could do this in a bigger bowl as well. That might make it easier. I like to test the limits, you know. All right, now, so now we've got soft, luscious peaks. Beautiful. All right, now we're finished with our whisk. We're gonna use the strainer whisk in a few bowls, guys. I am saving your water bill, that is for sure. And a couple of pots and pans. Okay, 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 okay. I hear you. All right, now folding. We got our kind of warmish chocolate. We've got our cream. And we've got our cream cheese mix. So chocolate goes in first. All right, lovely. And as we fold this, we wanna bring everything from the outside inwards. So go around the bowl and bring that in and then up and over, under and over, under and over, and just keep that up. I know there's no air in here really, but I like to treat it soft with gentle love, you know? So what that chocolate in turn is gonna do that's gonna set it up. That's gonna kind of stiffen it up to what we need it to be for a slicing consistency. No baking, guys, no gelatine. This is super easy. All right, now let's go with the cream. First, I just wanna put in maybe half of it, okay? And just lop that over itself, yeah? Lop that over. One more time the last bit of cream. And for this final fold, I'm just gonna zest a little tiny lemon. And that's just gonna give like a little bit of a humness to it, you know? So we're just gonna take this just a little bit, just maybe like a quarter of a lemon is all we need. Just kind of lift it up a little bit. You got a lot of fats in there, you know, a little bit of honey, the lemon, it's just white chocolate, it's all gonna really work well. Folding that through. And look, five minutes later, guys, we've got a beautiful, beautiful cream cheese mix. Really important to get that kind of smooth consistency with the cream cheese at the start, and then, and then now you're reeking the benefits when you're folding it through and you're just looking at the smooth, luscious batter rather than looking at all these tiny little lumps in there just thinking, dear God, I've, I've really done something wrong here. So just, yeah, really kind of emphasize that starting point and, the, and it will really be something special at the end. Now we've got this out of the freezer and that's already firmed up for us. And if it hasn't, it doesn't really matter because this is just gonna lay on top. We're gonna lay it all down nicely and then we're just gonna bang it in the freezer again for one hour if you need it really quickly, or just stick it in the fridge, wrap it up, and you're done, my friend. You are done. And that will probably set in about, the mixture's not that warm for me right now, so I reckon about two hours. It'll be nice to go, but give it three just to be sure, if you're in no rush. But you've just made this cheesecake, so I'm guessing you are. Now, I can use a palette knife, or you can just use a warm spoon, whatever you want. And then just smooth this around. Beautiful. And that's the perfect size. It's about two thirds cake. Or probably, yeah, it's about three quarters cake to one quarter base. That's kind of what I want. And then once I got it nice and smooth on the top, I can just bang that straight back in the freezer. 
and we'll make our raspberry sauce to go with this afterwards. And a couple of fresh raspberries on top. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Oh, oh that's really good. You don't have to be that kind of, dang, just chuck it in and chuck it in the freezer if you really want. But getting like a kind of a smooth top is nice. We can put some fresh raspberries over there. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be completely smooth, but you could sit there and smooth it out really if you wanted to. I'm gonna bang this one in the freezer and uh, yeah, get on to the sauce. All right guys, now that we've had a wee clean up, it's time to make some raspberry sauce. This is so simple. I'm using frozen raspberries for this recipe because the fresh ones are so expensive. So, and plus I've always got them in the freezer for the smoothie, remember? All right, so about 100 grams of frozen raspberries. Boop, boop, boop. Um, I think these bad boys melted in the car a little bit the other week. I wanna put a little bit of sugar in there, just a tiny bit, because we want, I don't want it too much because of the cheesecake's quite sweet in itself, isn't it? So just on maybe a, a small tablespoon. Lime, I wanna add lime juice to kind of freshen this up a little bit instead of just one dimensional taste. And that lime again will cut all the sweetness. So if I just add half a lime squeezed into there. And just cause I like like a little bit of a thin sauce, I'm just gonna add Okay, hopefully you've got a blitzer like this or maybe a stick blender or a jug blender. I like this thing because it's nice and small, small cup and uh, it's got a good motor on it. So we're just gonna blitz that up. All right guys, you can try that. It's just gonna taste like fresh, like frozen raspberries with icing sugar and lime, but Oh, that's gonna be so good with the cheese, oh, yeah. Okay, so just screw the lid back on that one or do whatever you need to, put it in a container, tub, anything for service, get it wrapped and put it in the fridge and wait for our cheesecake. Alrighty guys, welcome back. After one hour now, our cheesecake has been in the freezer. We've got our lovely raspberry sauce here, which I just wanna put into a little serving dish here. If you haven't got a serving dish, just put it into a normal cup. I mean, we don't all have flash things like lemoire. Now, this cake, you can keep this bad boy in the freezer for a very long time. Just make sure you wrap it and it's gonna keep for at least a month in there. With this one, since we didn't spray the outside and we haven't baked it, so nothing's really came away from the outside of the cake room, just take a hot knife and just run it around the outside of that cake ring, pushing against the cake ring. Once you've done that, let that spring fly. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right guys, now, We've got that baking paper underneath, we can kind of slide that off. And hopefully she's a little bit frozen underneath. So, if you can take a wee palette knife, the same one we used before, just kind of just mimic. Just kind of run that knife underneath. Okay, and then you can push that off. Push that off onto your chopping board. Now, if you want, you can portion this up now with a hot knife, or you can just put it straight onto the plate. I'm just gonna put it straight onto the plate. Run our pellet knife under. If you haven't got one of those, just use a fish slice, anything kind of thin, and onto the plate like that. Perfect. You see that base a little bit crumbly, but it's, it, it's lovely, it's fine, okay? Give the hands a little bit of rinse. Now I'm just gonna garnish this, because I've got the fresh raspberry sauce. I'm gonna put a few fresh raspberries just on top here. Beautiful. I mean, you can just run in there. I just love the red and the green look. Um, you don't have to do this at all. And I just get the little, little tips.
that's all from me here on the Small Town Cook channel. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification so you can get my weekly updates and also follow me on Instagram if you want to know more. Ciao.